This is chapter 19 on basic construction for the North Carolina real estate exam prep. Hey. I'm Sean Kelly. Welcome to my channel on everything real estate. So a few of you have used the 10% off link down in the description below for new signups on real estate courses. So welcome to class. Remember to subscribe and thank you for watching these. Just to be transparent here, I do get a $25 Amazon gift card for everyone who does use that link. So thank you so much for your support. And it's really a win-win because 10% gets you $50 off and I get $25, so it's pretty cool. Anyways, on to basic construction. It's great to know many of these concepts coming up because although we're not inspectors, it really makes us look a lot more professional and helps us check for any red flags. During walkthroughs, clients will ask, what kind of foundation is this? How much square footage does it have? What's wrong with that window sill? Things like that. So it's nice to have a basic concept of what they're asking. To begin, let's go over some of the home styles, which are really great for walkthroughs. There are ranch homes, which are your most typical type. It's just a one story home, and it's usually more expensive per square foot for these types of homes. This is because it's one level, so the square footage is based off of the square footage of the foundation. It's a one for one square footage metric. And foundations are really expensive. So a two story home would have two square feet stacked on one square foot of foundation and that's why it can be a little bit cheaper. A split level house is a little bit more uncommon for newer houses. It's where you enter kind of in between the first floor and the second floor and you can choose whether you wanna go up or down. It's a little less accessible and these are harder to sell. And the last we'll cover are colonial homes which you can kind of just assume what these look like. Very old school. Now for the construction parts, we'll start with the foundation. A foundation is what supports the entire house. It's what the house sits on. It starts with the footing, which is below the frost line. Then your foundation or stem wall goes on top of that. And that's usually what you can see when you're driving by and looking at houses. And you can see concrete under the house or sometimes cinder blocks. Then goes your sill plate, which is the first row of treated lumber that sits on top of your foundation. With a lot of this, you really just need to analyze some basic images. With foundations, you have slabs, which are entirely concrete. Then you have foundations that are crawl spaces, which is where your house sits above empty space and then dirt. And then you have basements, which are areas that are accessible underneath the house. Then let's do framing. So as mentioned before, the sill plate is the very first piece of treated lumber that sits on top of the foundation. Floor joist supports the floors and are on all foundations except for slabs. Then goes your subfloors, which are basically plywood that sits on top of those floor joists. Studs are typically two by fours that sit on top of the sill plate and go up your walls. This is what's really behind your sheetrock. Sill plates are also the very bottom portion of a window frame. So not only is it the very bottom of a wall frame, it's the bottom of a window frame. You've heard of a sill window sill before. Then the headers go above windows and doors. The ridge is the top board that is at the peak of the roof, like a mountain ridge. Then the last framing parts are really the fascia and the soffit. The fascia is the part of the trim that faces you on the outside of the house at the end of the eave. The soffit is the part that's just under the eave. On a window, the muntin, I think that's how you pronounce it, are the little pieces that separate each individual window pane. While a mullion, again, I hope I pronounce that right, a mullion is what separates the entire window from a different window. Now for insulation, the higher R value for insulation, the better it performs, the more it insulates. Your HVAC or your heating and air is measured by tons or BTUs. The size BTUs you need for your home depend on the amount of square footage your home has. If you go to Lowe's and shop for their window AC units, you'll see on each box they go 5,000 BTUs, 7,000, 10,000 BTUs. And the larger the number of those BTUs, the larger amount of square footage that window AC can cool off. So building codes are worked up at the local level. They issue the permits, they make inspections and enforce the code locally. When the work is done, a certificate of occupancy is given. The certificate of occupancy means that the inspections have been passed and the building is ready for use. Think about the word occupancy. It's ready to be occupied. This is really an important topic here, manufactured homes and modular homes. A manufactured home is actually personal property at first. While it's brought in on a trailer or still has wheels and an axle on it, it's still personal property. If you buy land with a manufactured home sitting on top of it and it still has those wheels and axles and so on, if some requirements are not yet met, there's a chance that that piece of land does not include the trailer or the manufactured home on it. That home may not convey. 
Once it becomes permanently affixed, that's when it becomes part of real property. Permanently affixed means that the hitch, the wheels, and axles are removed. It must also have an affidavit of a fixture from the DMV and must have a certificate of occupancy. So remember that for the test, the wheels, hitch, and axles must be removed for a manufactured home to be permanently affixed. Okay, now for another subject that will be on the test. What is square footage? The square footage is defined as the area that is heated with a conventional source, so not a bonfire on your floor. The area is finished, directly accessible, and at least half of the space or room must be seven feet or higher. Remember, heated space, so the garage does not count. Your screened in porch might be heated by the sun as well, but come on, that doesn't really count. A closet would count, bonus rooms, a furnace room, etc. When it comes to measuring square feet, you can rely on what the listing agent provides or other professional provider. Another note here is that when a ceiling is sloped, the square footage starts where the ceiling hits five feet and higher. So anything less than that five foot on that sloped ceiling does not count as square footage space. Cool, so that's it for chapter 19 already. I hope the visuals helped. I haven't pulled the images yet, so I'm not sure what all I'll be able to find on this. Construction is a very visual subject, so remember to look at some of the images that are provided in your book or go to Google image searches and type in things like windowsill or, or any terms that you're unsure about. This subject is kind of cool because when you actually do some walkthroughs with a client, they may ask, what's wrong with that soffit up there? And you'll actually know where to look instead of looking confused. Adds a little bit more professionalism to your tool belt. I know this chapter was short, but let's do a quick review. Ranch style homes are very common. They are typically single story and cost the most per square foot, normally. Split level homes are a little bit harder to access and stairs are involved and layouts aren't ideal, especially for today's more modern home buyers. A foundation is made up of a footing that goes below the frost line and then a stem wall where the foundation wall sits on top of that and then piers and beams are more centered around your crawl space. There are concrete slab foundations, there are crawl spaces, and there are basements. A sill is the lowest part of your wood framing and sits on top of the foundation. A window sill is the lowest part of your window framing. Headers go above doors and windows. The fascia or fascia is the end of your eave and is the part that faces the street. The soffit is the under part of the eave. A muntin is a part of a window that breaks up the window panes. A mullion is a window divider that separates different window units. The R value of insulation is the thermal resistance. The higher, the better, or more insulated. Heating and AC are measured by BTUs. A certificate of occupancy states that inspections have passed and a building is usable. Manufactured homes must be permanently affixed to become real property, so this means removing the hitch, the wheels, and the axle. You must also get an affidavit of a fixture from the DMV and get a certificate of occupancy. You need that certificate of occupancy here just to make sure that those requirements have met, that the axles have been taken off, and that this manufactured home is actually livable. Square footage is defined as a space that is heated, readily accessible, and at least half the space is seven feet or higher. And that wraps it up for today. Thank you so much for watching everyone. I've been getting really great feedback on this channel and that really means a lot. On my other channel where I build things or do some remodeling, I always get comments like, I would have done it this way, blah, 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 blah. Or I've been in construction a hundred years and you're doing it wrong. And while I appreciate the feedback because I learned from it, this has been a feel good channel so far. So thank you. Anyways, please subscribe, give this video a thumbs up and thank you so much for watching. Our last chapter is next, chapter 20 on real estate investing. I'll see you soon.